Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to start um, introducing our player object and um, get, it, get everything ready and set up for scripting in our next video. So last lesson we created some prefabs, so what I can do actually is just select all of these and delete them and let's just make a bit of a base awesome so I'm going to go to my art folder and I'm, as I said I'm going to create a character so find who you're going to work with um, probably the idea would be that you will be making your own characters but let's just learn together for now so I'm going to drag in a sprite just into the scene um, and I need to add some you know, objects to make this actually a character as opposed to just a, an image so I just uh, rename him player one player one awesome um, so we can see we've got the sprite anytime I want to change that I can just change that and change on the fly but I'm happy with my little blue dude for now <coughs> so there he is so what I need to do um, next is make it so that he can interact with the world if I just press play and it's handy to flip between this play and and, and scene in game um, this is sort of what's happening in the game right now so nothing happens understandably because it's just a picture painted there so if I get my player and click on add component first of all I'm going to do the box collider 2d again and what I want to do here is just modify this size a little bit so that he's not gonna adversely impact things when he hits it so we just reduce that slightly and I might just again reduce box collider slightly and then move it down a little bit so his feet so the box collider's on the feet because essentially there's going to be a collision between that rectangle that I've got here and the rectangle that we established earlier on the ground so if I can just line that up a bit better this will um, this will be good I'm not too worried about the head if he happens to bump an object up in the head area I'm okay with that you might want to make yours a little bit tighter, but it would be wise to make it a little bit thinner. Maybe not as narrow as I have, but that's okay. So that's the box collider 2D. And the next thing we need to do is add, and it's already here, rigid body 2D. So remember, if you don't use the search, um, we're sort of looking in this physics 2D area. Um, there's a whole heap of different options, but we're going to be working with rigid body 2D. And essentially what this does, this does is it controls the object and in a moment or in the next video I'll show you how, to, how that we can programmatically start to manipulate this rigid body and the transform to enable our player to move. Um, so already when you bring in the rigid body we can see that we've got some different things so, um, we can add a material if we want it already has um, a pixel sorry an image applied so we don't need to change that we can change the mass gravity um, detection um, and position and rotation etc. So if I press play now we should find that we've got gravity applied and this dude will drop. Let's have a look. Okay cool so he drops no worries. Um, if I press left and right nothing happens. Um, that's somewhat predictable um, because uh, we haven't given him any controls. So if I just do that again just pressing the play button I can see that he falls at a certain rate um, so what I might do is I might just grab my player. I'm going to show you a little trick. If we move him a little bit over slightly, and we're just going to play with this gravity. So gravity scale is set to one. If I set this to, I don't know, let's just say ten and a half, make it pretty extreme, and we'll drag him up a bit. Um, press play now. He should drop really quickly. Oh, probably too quick, and he fell off the cliff. Okay, we'll change the gravity down to five more. <laughs> try and figure out what's going on. So if we press play now, he'll drop quick, and then he hits this point and topples over. And the reason for that is, I'll press, um, if I'm quick enough, I'll just reduce my gravity down to one again, so we can see it. And I'm gonna flip, when it's playing, I'm gonna go back to my scene so I can identify what is happening with my character. So if I click on scene, and I can see that his um, Z rotation is changing. Um, and essentially if I scroll out far enough we'll see him 
continue to drop and drop and drop and drop and drop. Okay, if I stop playing, uh, my guy's back again. So if we go to this constraints area, uh, if we click freeze rotation on the Z, because uh, we could see the rotation up here changing endlessly. If we click play, now let's have a look. You should hit the point and stay. Awesome. So he still doesn't move because we've given him no programming, uh, which we'll do in our next video. Um, probably the next thing that we'll do is just prepare ourselves for the programming. So first of all, really important, we need to change what we use for programming. By default, it will want you to use Visual Studio, um, and that's okay. However, you, for the most part, will need to purchase a license for that. And Unity does come with a built-in editor, so we'll use that one. It's better. Better for the fact that it's free. So we go to Edit, Preferences, and we go to External Tools, and we need to change External Script Editor to Mono Developer. As I said, it's free, comes with Unity, it means it's a pretty good thing to use. Um, every time you load Unity on a new computer, however, you'll need to reset this option manually. It doesn't save between places. Um, if I press play right now, nothing will change, We've still got the same thing. The other thing I might just quickly do is I might establish a folder for scripts. So I'm going to go to my, my project folder, right click, create a folder and I'll call it scripts. Awesome. Um, in our next video um, we'll create a, a script which is going to start manipulating this rigid body and the transform to move our character around. Thank you.